There we go. Thank you to the band. What an amazing, what an amazing number. I really, I think they knocked it out of the park on that one. The uh, uh, Marine Corps band and I don't know, 1940 something. Everyone, hello. Welcome back. Welcome back to the stream once again. We are here on a very special day because we are going to be doing something um, by popular demand or at least by the demand of, of one person on YouTube who came up with this idea which is to work with Tokipona again, but this time, instead of making a, a, a ruin lex, a, a, a relaxification that ruined the, the spirit of the language, we are going to be working with some diachrony. So we are going to be working with the historical development of a descendant of Tokipona uh, that we have deemed will be cursed in some sense. Cursed how? I don't know. We will find out. My my temptation, my idea, is that we'll do something involving something involving some morphophonological mayhem. But that's the thought. So, how is everyone doing today? Before we jump in and do any uh, do any conlanging, I want to ask how you're doing because the summer, at least in the northern hemisphere, is coming slowly to a close that brings some some sad feelings but also a feeling of renewal i mean there's nothing like that first cool breeze in september to get you thinking hmm maybe i need to study a bunch of more a bunch more languages maybe i need to take up a completely new hobby maybe i need to redouble my efforts at finally documenting the uh, many conlangs that we've been working together on on this channel that one comes from personal experience but such is life, the seasons change, and, and if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you're getting the opposite, uh, the opposite experience. You're coming out of the cold and you're, you're starting to think about beaches and things. Well, it's all very good. What we are going to do, what we are going to do, and if you're in the tropics, yeah, Maddie, if you're in the tropics, then these are alien, these are alien feelings to you, but, uh, here I'm, I'm transmitting them. I'm trying to just think of what that might be like. You're walking, you're, you know, maybe you're a kid, you're walking home from school, you hear the crunch of leaves under your feet. You're listening to the Tarzan soundtrack in German. This might be very specific to me, I don't know. That's a very September memory for me. But anyway, um, yeah, Flora Sonata, you're learning German too. Okay, there we go. <sighs> These changes of seasons, I always have a strong temptation to start a new a new language learning project. And I'm really, really trying to keep it to just a few languages uh, for now. I'm trying to resist the temptation. Anyway, that's all the news. The I, oh, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce the cuneiform, but uh, 
someone's someone's happy for summer's end you know it's been a hot summer over here so i'm looking you know what i am looking forward to new outfits i'm looking forward to being able to wear different things um because you know the summer wardrobe is not to me that interesting you know it's a lot of short sleeve shirts you know this yeah sure there's the hawaiian shirts the floral shirts those are great love those but you know there are no cardigans right there are no sweaters there are no there's nothing cable knit about it anyway i've been going on too much that's not what we're here for we're not here to talk fashion although we could talk fashion what we're here for is to uh to evolve tokipona into some kind of cursed descendant so i think i'll say hello to youtube and then we'll get started. All right. Lucy, keep that in the keep that in the intro that YouTube. Welcome back. We are here today to do something kind of cool. We are returning to our old uh, to the scene of the crime, our old haunt, Tokipona. And we are going to be playing around with the historical linguistics of some future Tokipona descendant. So we're going to be looking at sound change, we're going to be looking at grammaticalization and the development of new morphology, and we'll see, we'll see where it takes us. All right, so YouTube, welcome, and let's go over to the side webcam. I have a little, I have a little text that I've prepared, just a few sentences that we can use to sort of, um, work on the sound changes. Let's see what we want this descendant language to be like. So the first thing that I want to do, my, my wish list for this descendant is, I would like one non-concatenative, if I can spell it, morphology. That's my number one wish list. I think two would be um, agreement. I'd like to see some agreement morphology going on. And, and three, a different fun aesthetic. So I think these are three cool goals that we can use to, to guide us over the next two hours. Um, we have in the audience, in the chat today, we have some people who are our proficient Tokipona speakers. And this is going to be so essential because that does not describe me in the least. I am I'm an admirer, but I'm not a speaker. So we shall we shall uh, hope that they they don't uh, that they don't um, get too offended by any of the uh, the sound changes that we're going to to do. But the thing is, it's it's kind of a tribute. So, okay, let's do this. How are we going to get non-concatenative morphology? The thing that I would like most is to have initial consonant mutation. Initial consonant mutation. This is kind of my favorite bit of morphology. This occurs when we have the initial consonant of a, um, of a word changing in different grammatical contexts. And we can see sort of how that might occur. Let's, let's take an example. Let's take an example. Let's see where. Okay, so say we have a sound change that takes S and turns it into H in between vowels. So this is our, our sound change. And if we applied this sound change to our text, oops, that's not what we need. Okay, if we have, um, we apply that sound change to the text and consider that these sound changes can apply across word boundaries if we have things like clitics, which I think A could be construed as, then we might have soeli turning to hoeli here. So e hoeli tomo. But here, where soeli is not in a position with a, a vowel clitic right next to it, a, a vowel final clitic right next to it, it stays as soeli. All right, so that's step one. Step two, we have to remove the 
triggering condition. So say we have this, this, this proclitic A, which just deletes everywhere. Or let's say, I don't know. Say we lose the initial A in, um, in initial position. I think we'd want a better rule than that. We'd want something a bit more morphological, but whatever. For our purposes, that will work. So then we lose the A. And now the only way we can, and the only thing that's telling us that this, that there used to be an A here is the fact that this is hoeli instead of soeli. So we get this alternation between soeli and hoeli, where soeli, well, hoeli appears uh, as direct object, and soeli appears elsewhere. So this is our kind of, this is how we evolve initial constant mutation. And this is a, a phenomenon that occurred, that has occurred in, in several different language families, not that many, but the most notable one that I think most people would have heard of is uh, Celtic. All right, so I think that's a good start. So let's go through and apply this across the board. So we will have NASA go to Naha. Oops. Here we have a nice boundary between this uh, this adverbial and soeli, so there's no there's no change. Here we have no S's. Oh no, we have Suli here. Ah, and here's a, a question. Do we consider this noun adjective phrase, this, so this noun phrase, do we consider this to be a valid, um, con a valid uh, domain in which to apply this change? And I think it is. This is exactly what happened in the Celtic languages as well. So we get huli here. And what else do we get? Ta ho. Okay, great. So maybe I'll, I'll do a quick rearrange here just to just so that's a bit easier to read I think apologies you know what I'll do you can just you can look at me while I do this because this is kind of annoying to look at and hopefully I will be slightly less annoying to look at all right oops the struggle my struggles are real I don't know how the streamers who, who go on and they they work, they stream for hours and hours on end and they're doing all these complicated games and everything. I don't know how they do it. I struggle with, with Google Sheets, but anyway, that's my life. All right. I believe, yeah, I believe Cinderin has constant mutation because Cinderin is very Welsh influenced. Um, I don't know about Quenya. I don't think it does. All right. Did I miss another tasso? I did. Thank you so much. Oh, who said that? Uh, Max. And Echo. All right. All right so that's our, our first thing. And this is... This only applies to... to A as the proclitic. It's not a general phonological rule. All right, so let's apply it further. So this is a proclitic here. So a p p. We have to decide what to do with that. Um, are there any other a's? No. Okay, so this will get lost, this a p p. But the question is, do we want something to happen to the um, to the p first? And I think we do. I think we do. So. Now that we understand the general gist of this, let's blatantly steal the uh, the Celtic sound changes. So we have lenition. 
of P of S to H in between vowels and of P to F in between vowels. And so basically what lenition is doing is moving everything um, away from being, um, so it, it moves, stops, it turns stops into fricatives and it debucalizes fricatives. So previously existing fricatives. So we have this S to H where S loses its, its place of articulation in the mouth altogether and just goes to H. Huh. So that's this sound change is called debucalization. What's interesting about the Celtic initial consonant mutation is that you can't really easily describe it as one single phonological process. It's one single morphophonological process that consists of several different phonological processes. Okay. So let's see what happens. So say we lose uh, P goes to F in between in between vowels. So let's see what we have. Mm, so this P is protected by the N, so that's good. It can stay. P to F, what else do we have? Ah. So we definitely are going to lose this P. Oops, this P is going to turn to an F. And the question is, are we going to lose the first one? I guess it depends on what we consider this Li to attach to. If the Li attaches to P phi or PP, uh, in this, in the original, then we would. If the li attaches to the left, to this subject, then we wouldn't because it would be, you know, the subject and the verb are in different, um, are in different, uh, let's just say, domains, phonological domains. All right. So, I think based on let's look let's look up in the, and we have a dictionary up here on the on the right so we can look up some grammar between any subject except me alone or Sina alone and its verb also to introduce a new verb for the same subject that sounds to me like it's attaching to the verb so in that case it will be a proclitic on pp and then we will have lififi Okay, so then let's continue with our, our P to F fun. So me, yo, a, p, p, a, p, p, going to a, fi, fi, and then we're losing the A. Kulupu, we're losing the, the P is lenating to an F. And here it's lenating to an F again. And here in tempo, it is protected by the nasal. Okay. Uh, Echo's saying there's still some unmutated soeli and uh, keyboard mashing at the same time. Well, we have this soeli, which is not intervocalic. This S is not intervocalic because we have a boundary, a phrase boundary before it. So this will stay soeli. Similarly, this uh, S in soeli will stay S because there is a phrase boundary before it, which is marked off by this comma. Um, so I think that's all good. Okay. Welcome back, Quay. <laughs> no worries, no worries, Echo. Okay. So that's good. Now let's propagate some of these decisions we've made about the status of Li. So Li is a proclitic, so it's going to attach to Yo, Li Yo. And Lilon, great. What else do we have? Any more Lees? Uh, here we go, Li Li Li. All right, so let's, did I miss anything? Chad will always tell me if I missed something. And that's why I love chat. All right, so do we have any more Lees? No, I don't think so but we have some more P's to take care of. Specifically this P. And let's look up for those of us who are rusty, what this P means in this dictionary. This says, let's use it to divide a second noun group that describes a first noun group. So some sort of a 
some sort of a genitive marker or some some kind of something like that anyway okay so p and the question is what is that going to pattern with is that going to pattern with the second group or the first i think it's going to pattern with the second given that these pre um these pre-nominal markers seem to pattern with uh, the noun following them so we can draw our clitic boundary like this and do we have any other p's to work on no so in this case the p stays all right okay i see some really good ideas in the chat and i think we're thinking along the same lines but I'm going to go step by step and we will return to Nasal's uh, letter critic. And um, Max, we will be lenighting other stops intervocality. So that's the next step. All right, so we have P, we have S done. And we can take this out. So then if we have P going, we should also have T going to th. So same environments and k going to ch in the same environment. Okay, so let's, first of all, so now that we have these sound changes prepped, we have to make sure that we don't, that we're not missing any other clitics or any other positions that would uh, cause mutation. So I think um, I think ni as a demonstrative will criticize and la will criticize as well. Um, so ni is a demonstrative and la is something like an adverbial uh, or an adverbial marker or a topic marker, something like that. Um, I don't know if there's a way of getting more details here. I think there is. Detailed mode, there we go. Right. Right, okay. So that's good. And what else do we have? I want to mark where we have our noun phrases. Yan mute lio hoeli tomo. So there will be constant mutation within these phrases, even though they're not uh, clitic groups. Soeli tomo nasa. Mute. I think that's all one big noun phrase. Many unusual animal houses. And what else do we have? So many tomo. I think me will count as a clitic because it is a possessive marker there. And okay, what else do we have? Mio e mio e pipi. Lili piculu pusuli. Um, I think we have this as a noun phrase, piculu pusuli, or in our descendants so far, piculu fuhuli. And mi yo e pipi lili. A P P. I think I'm missing a. I'm missing a word there. All uh, right, so we can put this together as a noun phrase as well. And in fact, these are nested. So this is all one big noun phrase, but we don't have to worry about that. Right. Okay. Okay, Jan Temili says, Soeli Tomo isn't an independent noun phrase there. It's marked by P, which means it's acting as a modifier. You can probably treat it the same as you preserve P in some way. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's um, really what it is, is this. We have this nested structure. But for the purposes of the mutation, we'll just look at it one, one phrase deep.
Pipili. Yeah. So Yantepili, it is one noun phrase, but it contains within it a second noun phrase. Um, yeah. Sorry, there's a bit of a delay. So if I say something that you've already, you, you, you know what to expect. Okay. So then now that we've got that done, let's just finish this. Um, taso kulupu ona li lili lon tempo ni. So let's put te ni with tempo. And let's put kulupu ona. This would be, I think, correct me if I'm wrong. Does this, um, does this, would this translate to English as something like their, their communities? Uh, that's my question for those more knowledggeable <laughs> chromatic what are we doing to poor tokipona we're 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 applying the ravages of time okay so the first thing we're doing is this lenition which will give us initial consonant mutation and then after that there are many more things that we will do right okay so then now let's go through and do our our initial constant mutation of, or our, our lenition of T to th. So we'll go through and we'll be very, very systematic about it. So tempo ni la yan muthe lio hoeli thomo. Taho soeli soeli thomo na ha muthe lilon. Mila, I think we need to criticize this la. Soeli thomo mi li fifi muthe. And then we have mio fifi lili piculu fuhuli. No T's there to, to do. Taho kulufu ona li lili lon tempo ni. And the question is well, this wouldn't um, mutate anyway because of the N, but. Would lon tempo ni form a phrase? But their communities, and then how do we, tr I, I glossed it as few. I'm not sure if that's the right gloss. Um, sorry, that's lon, lon is exist. Tempo ni is time demonstrative. I'm missing something. But their communities, few exist time. Yeah, I'm, I'm having trouble parsing this. Chat, help me out. Oh yeah, regarding the uh, the romanization, I'm just using IPA for now. We can make a, a nice romanization afterwards. Um, yeah, I missed I missed tempo knee here, so that's one thing. What's the relationship between lily and lon? Lon is a preposition. Ah, okay, that's really great. So, but their uh, communities are few at the current time. So that is going to be lon being used as a, a like a preposition. So we can we can either call it consider it a clitic or or just consider it a phrase. Either way, it's going to be a valid domain for the application of mutation. However, in this case, there is no mutation yet. Okay. To shrink. Oh, interesting. So as the, um, as the translation, but there, Communities are shrinking now. Maybe that would be a decent translation. Or are, are small now. Or few. Um, obviously, the usual problems of translating um, into English are, are apparent. Okay. 
So, right. So we've done, we've done our T to Th. Now we need to do our K to H. So let's go and uh, hopefully we'll, I'll pick up a little bit of pace now that I've explained what we're doing. So just briefly looking to see if there are any K, K, K. Ah, here we go. Pichulufu. Pichulufu huli. Pichulufu huli, rather. Tahu, taho kulufu ona li lili lon temponi. Okay, so that is our first round of constant mutations. What else can we do? Using the magic of nasal stop clusters, we can introduce voiced consonants. So Essentially, we have n. All right, I'll write this in a bit less of a <laughs> less of a an abbre a less abbreviated way. N p to b. N t to d. N k to g. Right, okay, so let's see what happens now. And keep in mind that these do apply in the usual bound, in the usual positions where we can get constant mutation phenomena. So this will give us a second kind of mutation. So tempo nila will turn into tebo nila. Yan mute, yan muthe li yo hoeli thomo. Taho soeli thomo na hamuthe lilon. Mila soeli thomo mi li fifi muthe. Mio fifi lili pi hulufuhuli. No opportunities yet. Taho kulufuona li lili lon tempo. So this is going to become lo debo ni. Lo debo ni. Right, so we have mutation of tebo to debo after lo. All right. Okay, so here we are. Now, I think we need to do something, just because we're using, um, using Celtic languages as our inspiration, I think we need to do something a little, a little fun, which is m to v. <laughs> just to get the, the full the full effect. So, tempo ni la yan mu yan muthe li yo hoeli tho vo. Excellent. And here the m is protected by the n. Taho soeli tho vo na ha muthe na rather. Lilon. Mila so elitho vo vi. Lififi muthe. And I'm assuming that this this um, pause here is going to break the break the pot, uh, the potential for for mutation. But I could I could be convinced otherwise. All right. Mi yo fifi lili pi hulufu huli. Taho taho kulufu ona li lili lo debo ni. It's a thing of beauty. Okay. All right. Let's put in a quick break here now that we've done our the bulk of our mutation forming um, sound changes and we'll we'll come back and we'll see what else happens. So YouTube, thank you for joining us once again. We have been evolving Tokipona, so come back and we'll do it some more. We will see you then. Okay, all right. Chat, I apologize for not being as attentive to you as normal. I am, oh, I'm seeing some gold here. Okay. Maddie asks when we're gonna call the unstressed vowels soon.
soon. Okay, and <laughs> Cicinho is saying Hulufu is cursed, I agree. Yes, and Jack is uh, is putting the is proposing that we destroy these L's in uh, Li and Lon. I I like that idea, kind of a Portuguese vibe. All right, and letter critic asks, can we do Jack's idea of A to Y before uh, vowel? Yeah, I really like that idea. So I think we're gonna have to deal with the. Um, vowels in hiatus, then we're going to do some vowel reduction. But anyway, I don't want to put too much of it off screen so the, the people in the video will see it all. So, dun, 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 dun. I'm going to welcome back YouTube. YouTube, welcome back. We are, we're sort of neck deep in sound changes uh, for our somewhat cursed descendant of Tokipona with constant mutation and, uh, and a very different... Uh, Fun aesthetic. So, um, enough of me yammering on. Let's let's go back and and work on it. Okay. So, to to bring us all up to speed again, we have through a, a small set of sound changes created a very different feel for uh, our Tokipona descendant, which I think we should probably we should probably name right. Um, mm -hmm. So. Let's put it over here. So Toki Pona, this will become Toki Fona for now. And we'll see what happens to it later. Okay. So we've had lots of great suggestions from the chat. We're going to ha try, and, um, try and bring as many of them into this language as possible because we want it to be, well, weird. So the first thing that we're going to do is we've, we've messed around with consonants a lot. I think we should play a little with vowels. Let's see what we can do. We can now one th one option we have is uh, to really go hardcore on our um, on our influence from Irish and palatalize everything next to a front vowel. But I think that that's a little too on the nose. So instead, I think we could do some, some umlaut. So let's say whenever we have a, a front vowel, so let's do some, some nice Germanic style umlaut. Uh, let's go to the O keyboard. There we go. So the next thing we're going to do is turn a o u to, and then we'll just get go over here to get them. A e i. Boom. And this is going to happen in a in the next syllable as a front vowel. Okay. So let's apply it. So te bonila. So this ni. And let's just say that the domain of application of these rules is the same for all of them. So within these clitic groups and within these phrases, um, or maybe just within the clitic groups, I think within the phrases that would be <laughs> that would be going too far. So within a clitic group, we can apply the we can apply the sound change. So going back here, tempo tempo nila tempo nila. We need to front this o so te bu te bu ni la yan mi se li yo hu we li tho vo ta ho 
Tsuwili Thovo Naha Vuthe Lilon Mila Tsuwili Thovivi So I'm assuming that this is going to spread Thovivi Lififi Muthe Mi yo fifi lili pihulufu hili. Paho kulufu ona. All right, we're lucky there. We don't have any front vowels. Li lili lo de beni. Do we really not have any a in this? I guess not. Okay, fair enough. So I'll read it out and see what we have so far. Te beni la. Yan muthe li yo hueli thovo. Taho, sueli thovo naha vuthe li lon. Mila, sueli thovevi li fifi muthe. Mi yo fifi lili pi hulufu huli. Taho kulufu ona li lili lo debuni. Lo debuni. Okay. Mute to vuthe. Vuthe is cursed. The curses will only continue. All right, so that's good. What else can we do? I think we want to delete. We want to delete L in, in clitics. So is going to be so this is a, a rule with a, a morphological condition this equals here means when l is at the start of a clitic delete it all right oh question uh coming in from willow isn't it le debuni so it would be if we considered this a, it would be if we considered this a a proclitic and i think it's reasonable if it's a preposition le debuni yeah that's reasonable especially because i like the way it sounds <laughs> oh and let's also apply the change to our language's name so Tehifona. All right, what's next? Let's. Oh, yeah, we're going to remove these L's from the, the clitics. In fact, only in clitics. So, not just proclitics, but in clitics as well. So, proclitics on the left and clitics on the right. Tebonia. Yan mithe iyo heweli thovo. Taho seweli thovo naha vuthe ilon. And you know what I'm going to do? Oh no. Focus con, just do it one thing at a time. Oops. Wrong line. Mia seweli thovevi ififi mithe. Mi yo fifi lili pi hulufu huli. Taho kulufu ona i lili edeboni. 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 That's right. <laughs> All right. So that's quite interesting. And I'm going to restore this, um, this A for now just so we can, so that we can uh, play around with it a little bit more before deleting it. So let's bring it back. Where was it? Where are A's? Here. Ehuili thovo. And Efifi lili. And I think those were the only ones. Yeah. Okay. So let's remove that. Now we have 
a bunch of vowels in hiatus. So what are we going to do about that? I think we should do some some proto-romance style um, glide formation. Okay, let's um, let's do it. So let's take a e to y before a vowel. U o to w before a vowel. So te bu nya yan mu se yo e hiwili thovo. Taho suwili thovo na havu se ilon mia suwili thovo vi i fifi mu se. Mio e fifi lili pi hulufu huli taho kulufu ona ilili ude buni. Okay. Well, we didn't get too much of that, but we did. We did get this tebunya, which is kind of nice. Mia. Tebunya, mia. I like those. Those are fun. Okay. What's next? What's next? Well, I think that we can I think we can either hmm I think it might be time to start losing some consonants or at least going into schwa. All right. So, let's say Vowels, non low vowels, turn to schwa. When word final, let's start there. All right, so the schwa, enter the schwa. So this is going to have a lot of effects. Tebunya. Yan mitha. So now we have lost the conditioning environment for this umlaut. So now we have a total um, phonologization of this contrast, this u i contrast. Mitha. I yo. Um, I ya. Um, no, no, no. Yo is a root. So we're not going to do that. So only in polysyllabic words are we going to be. Reducing to schwa. A hewe la thova. Taha suwe la thova na ha. We're not losing a yet. Vi th ilon. Mia suwe la thova v ififa. Mitha. Mio. And I'm wondering if we might want to consider this me as a proclitic. Yeah, I think let's do that. I have mio. It doesn't affect us yet, but it probably will at some point. A fifa lila pihulufa hila. Taha kuluf oh I missed kulufona kulufona ilila odebe odebe na great oh yantemeli you wouldn't say me is a proclitic there okay well we can we can consider it separate. I defer to uh, to the better judgment of those who know more about these things than I do. Um, okay, so then we lose. Well, we don't lose, but we go to techafona. Techafona. And we move on. Wow. 
what's next? I think we should also we should also schwaify vowels that are um, we should also schwaify vowels that are unstressed. Like I'll try and find an example. I think we should okay, let's now do a stress shift. So we have let's go to stress to antipenultimate. Mm, no, stress to penultimate. So then we go from tebonya tebunya to tebunya. Tebunya yan mithe iyo uh in the case so but it but not on proclitics. So stopping at the root or the stem left edge. So we wouldn't get io, we would get io. Um sorry that, that went off screen a bit, but I think you know what I mean. Yeah, we should we should we should mark the stress. That's a good point. Just so that we can keep track. So tebunya yan mitha oops yo e hewela thova. All right. Taha sewela thova naha vitha ilon. Mia, one syllable. Sewela thovva ififa mitha. So we get stress shift when we have the um, the uh, enclitics, which are really going to become suffixes, I think, at this point. They're so tightly linked. Miyo e fifa lila pihulufa hila taha kulufona ilila odebena So This is exciting. Now that we have stress shift that's dependent on what syllables are in the, what um, suffixes are on the, the noun, things are going to get very, very crazy. All right, now let's, let's get rid of, mm, yeah, let's schwaify Let's schwaify all unstressed vowels. Is that too is that too too dramatic? That might be too too dramatic. Maybe we need to just start by hmm. Maybe we need to start by peripheralizing these. Let's see. What do I want to have happen? Tebunya. I want this to be tabunya. Yan mitha yo ahuela thova. Yeah, I think if we do that, that would work. Oh, I like Jack's idea. Preserve the, the peripheral vowels that the mid vowels schwa. Okay, let's do that. So minus low, minus high, go to schwa. All right. Tabunya yan mitha iyo ahawela thova. Mm, we lose our front vowel there, sad.
Hmm. Do we want that? I kind of like that. Maybe what we could do. Okay, okay, okay. Let's let's rethink this because I don't want to lose this round vowel here. Maybe what we could do is is get all of these these antipenultimate stress words like kulupu and delete the middle vowel so that so let's say intertonic vowels delete so i'm assuming that there's a secondary stress um, every other syllable from the primary so we would go in that case Okay, this is going to be a bit of backtracking. I apologize. Paha sola. It was it's only going to affect a very few words. It's going to affect this one. Sola. And it's only going to occur within within a word. So it will be, it'll affect Hulfa Hila and then it will allow us to have Kulfwona. Okay, so what I've done is just taken all these cases where we had a three consonant root and I've ensured that the stress remains on the initial syllable by deleting that middle syllable. And then we get our stress shift. So we get hulfa for community, hulfa or kulfa, but hulfa in the mutated case, and then kulfona in, the, uh, in this case, their communities, hulfona. So we have two forms of the same word we have at least we have hulfa and kulfwona <laughs> so we're getting very complicated here very quickly we have both the initial constant mutation and the stress shift i wonder what's going to result uh, right so tochefona and then now let's have the mid vowels turn to schwa now that we've done that because so we can save this uh, in sola sola i love it so taha sola thova naha vitha ilon right nothing changes there mia sola and then we get the vote because now the stress shift has remove this the stress from this to so it's the mitha ififa mitha mio afifa lila pihulfa hula taha kulfona ilila adabena all right all right are we following okay? I know things have gotten a bit complicated. So, good. All right. Jan Timely, what did you miss? We, um, I just introduced a, a rule here to turn three syllable words into two syllable words before we do the stress shift so that instead of having soweli we have or soweli we have soweli and then that goes go to sola um and we keep that nice uh, vowel in the unsuffixed form but we still do get a stress shift when there are suffixes so we have pihulfa community and hulfwona their communities all right.
yeah it's a bit complicated but i think aesthetically it, it works a bit better than the alternative okay so pechafona what shall we do next Mm-hmm. Oops, I forgot one schwa. Actually, I forgot two schwas. Actually, I forgot a lot of things because I this was off screen. Tebinya yanmithe. Ahula thova. So I'll, maybe I should just read the whole thing through. I wish I could look at you, but this monitor's over here. Maybe I'll do this. Tabunya, yan mitha yo a hula thova. Taha, so la thova na ha vitha ilon. Mia, so la thavurva i fifa mitha. Mi yo a fifa lila. Pihulfa hula Taha kulfona ilila adabuna. That sounds pretty cool. All right, let's keep let's keep going. Now I think we need to destroy the schwas. I think it's time to destroy the schwas. Um, that's, we're running out of space here. By the way, here's the citation for the, uh, the article that we got this excerpt from. Do we want the, the Shawas to do anything before they, they depart? I think I think it's just time to I think it's just time to delete the schwa. So to nothing everywhere. Bunya Jan Myth Io Hulthov. Ta seul thov na havith ilon. Mia seul thov, sorry, seul thov ifif myth. Mio fif lil pihulf hul. Ta Kulfona, <laughs> that looks remarkably not preserved by uh, by our standards. Ilil Tbin. All right. So that happened. Tbinya yan myth yohul thov, thov, rather. Tah sul thov na havith ilon. Mia sul thvov thviv i fif myth. Mio fif lil pihulf hil. Ta kulfona i lil bun. Okay. And then what does this becomes? Techfona. Techfona. And I think we're going to want to just keep the. Uh, Keep the voice inconsistent here. Bunya. So I'll just make sure we have a voicing simulation in stop stop clusters. Great. Okay. All right. I'm going to put in a little cut here for YouTube after we've truly cursed the world by this uh, <laughs> by this language. Look, Jan is still the same, though. All right. Uh, full screen, webcam, back.
YouTube, thank you for joining us for this uh, fascinating experience. We are only halfway through with our work today. So come back and uh, you'll see in the next episode what happens next. So until then, we'll see you next time. All right. Okay. I'm going to take just a quick moment here to look at the chat. Chat, how are you? We are having fun. <laughs> we are. We have made um, Tokipona into Tehfona, which is a lovely language with front rounded vowels, stress shifting, um, stress shifting depending on what suffixes we have. Words end up looking completely different, much like in Lenovilef, actually. I think maybe there's some some deep seated need I have to mess with the uh, <laughs> mess with morphology by stress shifting. And uh, we have initial constant mutation, we have all sorts of stuff. All right, so Jan Temeli saying, write down Kiete Santa Kalu. Okay, we could put that in as well. Um, where am I going to put this? We're running out of space. I'm going to put it here. What does that mean, incidentally? That's a long word. Oh, it's a joke word that means raccoon. Okay, I have seen that, yeah. All right, so let's, let's uh, start off the next segment by running that through the sound changes. Uh, okay, well, I'll just welcome back YouTube because I, I don't think we should waste any time. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba. YouTube, welcome back. We're doing Tokipona diachronic evil. Um, so let's just get started. All right, there we go. Okay, so we need to put the word for raccoon um, through the sound changes. So what do we have? We have to... Uh, I think maybe I'm just going to give up on the idea that we would do any. Give up on the idea that we would do any glosses for these. Um, delete cells and shift up. You get to watch me work with the spreadsheet. Lucky you. Delete cells and shift up. And then, okay, yeah, we'll just. As I said, we won't worry about glosses for now or our translations rather. Okay. Kie te santa kalu. So first of all, we have our initial constant mutation. I could probably PTK to fathacha between vowels. Oops. Come on, Windows. And there we can make some space. Tehfona, that's the name of our language. All right, so here's our, here are our rules. Um, let me just see if I can get a bit more in there. Actually, I don't think we really need this. Great, okay, so. Kiete Santa Kalu. So our Lenitian rules will turn this into Kie Fe. Oops. <laughs> I still thought I had the th in the Kiefe Santa Halu. And then the nasalization rules, or the, I don't know, the NT cluster resolution rules give us Kiefe Sada Halu. And I'm noticing that we have an S here that has to become an H. Kiefe Hadahalu. And then we have our <laughs> we have our umlaut rule, which remarkably doesn't actually apply here. <laughs> How did we get away with that? I don't know. Uh, then we the this only applies in clitics, so we don't have to worry about it. E um 
turn to yeah before vowels mm, doesn't apply low vowels turn to schwa at the end of the word that is something we can do intertonic vowels delete within the word so this is assuming that we have primary stress initially and then secondary stresses after that in alternating syllables so ki ye the ha da ha la so we're going to lose our unstressed vowels so ki that are ki ki the da la and then we are going to make our primary stress go onto the penultimate and then we are going to lose our mid vowels in unstressed syllables and then we're going to lose schwa altogether so Ooh, okay i see some some interesting some interesting thoughts about what we should do with this th. Yeah, Timothy, Lee, do you have a different um, secondary stress grammar uh, for this word? Where would you put them? All right. I don't know what we're going to do. With we have to do something about this. This is this is this is wrong. Key. Keith, the <laughs> yad the ha da. Um, I'm going to say H goes to nothing where you would expect it to. Goes to nothing between consonants. That's not really a rule. That's just Keith Dachla. All right. Kiete Santa Kalu. Oh, interesting. So they're kind of dactyls. Cool. Yeah, I think for the purposes of this, I'll keep it to the the kind of trochaic meter. Kiete Santa Kalu. Kiete Santa Kalu. Santa Kalu. I don't know. I don't know. Well, we, we can always change it later, but I think for now, Kiftach is our word for raccoon. Tonogenesis. Oh, don't tempt me. Okay, I think we need now to recognize the fact that these are no longer, um, these are no longer clitics, these are proper affixes and mia just getting rid of all of these all of these clitics kulufona ilil dbin okay Yeah, and we're going to merge tokipona into one word, tokfona, and the stress, good idea, and the stress will be here, tokfona. Okay. Now, I think we're not done. I think we need to do some more messing. I think at this point... Dbinya is just a word, meaning now or then. Dbinya. Yan myth yo hul thov. So what are we going to do about these, these um, these off glides? Hul and ki 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 I think we should do 
something with those. I think what we should do, <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, okay. I see there are so many ideas in the chat for what to do with uh, the B. I think we need to, uh, we need to tackle that. I just want to finish off with these off glides first. I'd rather, what I'd rather do is turn them into on glides. So having something like EUL turn to WELL or, or WILL. Key. So I think that's what we'll do. We'll do um, glide vowel to, or sorry, vowel glide to glide vowel. So we'll just have a metathesis. So then we'll have Keith Dach. Keith Where else do we have Swill? Mm, what else do we have? Yeah, Swill. Hill. So Huil. Great. All right, so then what are we going to do about this DB? Yeah, let's dissimilate. So I don't know what, how, how general we want this to be, but at least this. Um, two coronal stops go to a velar and a, sorry, not coronal. Coronal, coronal labial go to velar labial. Maybe we should just say coronal labial go to velar labial. Gbin tah kulfona. Let's see. And yeah, gbin ya. Great. And that means also that tpa goes to kpa. Do we have any tpa? I don't think so. Th 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 ah, but th yes, yes. Thviv. This is a is a coronal followed by a labial. Thviv. So chviv. But interestingly, so so my house is chviv. House is thov. Now you see. Now you see. Okay, any other such cases I guess depending on how you want to count it swill could count as that but I think we'll count wa as sufficiently sufficiently velar to already to prevent that from happening mm, okay Let's see what we actually have here as a paradigm. Lo let's do the possessive, the various possessed forms of a noun. So let's use our trusty, I'm just gonna go and extend this over here. So we have thov, which is house. Put it down here maybe. So what are the different forms of thov that we can have? We can have my house. So 
Where is it? Chviv. <laughs> I think analogy is going to come in and, and uh, ruin our fun, but let's see what else we can do. We can have their house, which would be, well, let's see. Tomo Ona. How is this going to go? I'm sorry, this is Tov on its own, and then Tov. Yeah, so this is, it's necessary for us to take into account that these are not always mutated. So on their own, Tov and Kvov. And Tomo Ona would be, Tovo Ona. Tovo Ona. No mutation. Tovo Ona. Stress becomes penultimate. Tovo Ona. That's not the real stress marker. Tovona. Inter. All right, we have our our unstressed uh, mid vowels turning to schwa and then promptly deleting. Tvona. Uh, voicing assimilation in stop stop clusters. I'll say obstruent obstruent clusters. So then we have dvo. Dvona, and we'll change where this goes. Dvona, and then coronal labial goes to velar labial, so kvona. Just, you know, normal. So we have. I love how ona is still exactly the same. Dvona, kvona. So tov, kvov, kviv, rather. Kvona, kvona. What else do we have? Dual number, let's go. Tomo piona tu. All right. So this is going to be something like tovo. And let's just assume this is all one. One thing for the purposes of mutation. Tovo fiona thu. All right, what else is next? No nasal stuff going on. Yes, there is some. We'll say these are all together in one phonological word. And then so we need to front all of these. So teve. Teve fiona thu. And then we turn this E into a, a yod. Tovo fionathu. We lose the U at the end of the word to a schwa. Tovo fionatha. Tovo fionatha. Then we do the stress shift, which is tovo tovo fionatha. Right, Tevefinatha. Then we get rid of all of our mid vowels before the stress. Oh dear. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> this is not gonna this is not gonna work. <laughs> what has happened? Um, what has happened here? I think maybe we need to have a uh, an escape valve for some of these schwas if deleting them will utterly destroy the syllable structure. Um, we can... Dvafyanatha. And 
then dvfyanatha and then kvfyanatha. So then we have kvfyanatha. Something's gone terribly, terribly wrong with this language. Yeah, I think maybe secondary stress will save us, Jack. Good, good suggestion. Let's go back. So where is our secondary stress going to show up? Oh, do, do, do. Where did I put my secondary stress? Where did I put my secondary stress? Here we go. So. Tvfyanatha. So then we'll lose these guys. Tvfyanatha. And I think we're going to have to lose that yod. So let's just say... Well, I want something to do with the sonority hierarchy here, but I'm not going to bother with it. So I'll just... Let's just say, yeah, we're deleting the things that, that you would expect. Tvifnatha. All right. So we have Tvifnatha, which goes to Kvifnatha. Actually, these should be K, should they? They should be G. Gviv, because they're voiced. Gvona Gvifnatha. Oh, and that th is getting destroyed. So we have Gvifnath. And I think that's very nice. Gvif. Nath. Oh, why did I copy the A, Colin? Okay, so what is the actual? <laughs> what is the actual root? What is the actual morpheme for house? Because there's some there's some absolutely horrible things going on here. So, as a learner of this language, what would you hypothesize the morpheme for house is? Tov or gv? I just don't. I just don't know. Um, let's take a break. Let's, let's take a break. Let's clear our mind of the cobwebs and we'll come back and we'll see what else we can do. Because I, I know that there have been some amazing sound changes proposed in the chat that I want to, uh, I want to check out. So let's stop here, YouTube, come back, see what occurs, see what develops. The curses can only continue. Uh, we will see you back here next time. I don't know, I have to hold that. There you go. Okay. All right. Ooh. I'm going to take a quick break, refill my own water, and then we will continue. Be right.
the music stopped. Well, we're back. All right, let's let's continue. I think what we should do is work on a few paradigms for this language so that we can see, I saw in the chat the, the term principal parts being used. This is uh, the list of forms that you need, the sort of minimal list of forms that you need to be able to deduce the rest of the, um, the rest of the forms of a word. And I think we're going to have a situation in Pechfona that uh, is very amenable to needing principal parts. So let's let's try let's get a whole noun um, paradigm down, and then we will um, then we'll work onto the verbs. So without further ado, uh, YouTube, welcome back. We're about to do some crazy morphology in our cursed descendant of Tokipona called Pechfona. Um, so, I don't know. Get ready. It's about to happen. The curses continue. So we have a, a paradigm for the, the noun house that we're developing. And I think we need to finish it and then we need to move on to a verb. So we wanted more uh, agreement morphology in this language. Let's just rearrange this a bit. So... This is for Tov house, so we need a singular, a dual, and a plural. We need first, second, and third person. So Gviv is my house. Gvona is their house, or any of the third person singulars. Uh, Gvifnath is third person dual. We need to fill out this paradigm. All right. We can also do the dual and plural for house itself, which we should probably do and how all these interact. But for now, we're, we're pluralizing the house owners. So this is a singular house owned by many people. Yes, Jan Um so let's continue let's let's do our our second person um can i get a a, a um, i'm doing a little bit of elicitation right now with the chat um chat how would we say what would we use to make our second person singular i'm assuming it would be just the let me see if i can remember my tokipona tomo sina sina ah okay good uh, so let's put that through the ringer and see what happens. So, Tomosina. Going to turn into Tovohina. Which is going to turn into TV Tevehina which is going to get stress shifted over to Tevehina. And we're going to have secondary stress on this, this first syllable. Help me out, IPA. Dot type it dot org. You're brilliant. Tevehina. And then we lose the unstressed mid vowels. Tevehina. And that's it. Tevehina. Looks very different. Because we are keeping the, um, the syllables with secondary stress on them. We're not, we are not letting them fall victim to this rule where we lose the mid vowels. So, gviv is my house. 
Tevhina is your house. Gvona is his or her or its house. Gvifnath is is the two of them's house. Gwen v to f yeah yeah I like that. So. So anything voiced when it comes into contact with H just turns into Tefina. And it's really hard to segment these. So let's just not try at the moment. Oh boy. The two of them's house. Gvifnath. Or Gvifnath, I suppose. Yeah, let's make sure that we get the stress right. Gvifnath. All right. So then how are we going to do uh, the house of us two? So this is going to be Tomo, what is it? P, mi, tu, and then Tomo, P, Sina, tu. Am I right? Am I wrong? Am I totally off base? Tell me. We can get all the rest of our duels. If you think that this is extreme, this allomorphy, go learn Old Irish. And then tell me if you still think it's extreme. Oh, excellent. I got it. So let's, let's do our, our sound changes then. It would be, would it be quicker to lexergy it to death? Probably, but that's, I think, a little less fun. I mean, it's kind of fun to do that on my own. I don't know if you want to see me puzzling off, uh, puzzling about bug messages and things like that. But eventually, yes, that's what the, it, that's what we'll do. Tovo fi vi thu. Tovo fi hi na thu. And then what else? Let's get our umlaut. Tevo fi vi thu. And let's get rid of our final vowel. Well, not get rid, but schwaify it. And then just going to keep this boundary in here because we know not to delete these intertonic vowels within the word because there are no intertonic vowels within the word. Then we stress shift over to the, uh, the penultimate, Teva Fivitha, Teva Fihinatha, and then we. I am said you're you're conti you're currently attempting to lexergy it to death. Ooh, well, please share your your work. Uh, if you're, I, I don't know, you're on, if you're on the Discord, if you're not, you know, down and all that. There's the link. Um, sometimes I don't know because people have different names on Discord and, and on uh, on YouTube. And I can only remember like three things on any given day. So, okay. Teve fi vitha. Teve fi hinatha. And then we are going to put in our secondary stresses. I got to, I got to just keep, a secondary stress marker there just for for just such an occasion to vifivitha to vifihinatha so this very different um path that so that odd numbered and even numbered forms take 
is characteristic of old Irish, which is why I, I brought it up before, and they get very different. Right, so, did I get this right? No, I didn't. So we're going to lose this. We're going to, oops, nope, that's exactly what we're not going to lose. Colin, you're getting sloppy, pal. And you're going to lose this. Then we end up with Gvfivitha. Let me lose the schwa. So Gvfivith. And Tvfihi. So Tvfihinatha. Tefihinath. Oops. No. Colin, you're losing it, pal. There we go. Tefihinath. Oops, I got those backwards. So, what do you think? Gviv, Tefina, Gvona. Gvivifith, Tefihinath, Gvifnath. This is really bad. I think this is really bad. Let's make it worse. Okay. Plural. So I'm assuming that this would be, um, this would be Tomo Pi Mi Mute. Tomo pi sinamute, tomo pi onamute. Am I right there? So let's quickly quickly do these. So tovo fi vi vuthe. Right. So we are actually introducing a number distinction into Tichfona, uh, which does not exist in the ancestral language. Hina Futhe Tovo Fiona Vuthe Tovo Fi Tovo Fi Vuthe Tovo Fi Hina Vuthe Tovo Fiona Vuthe Let's continue. Um that Tevfivivithe Tevfihina Ooh, our first A Vithe Tevfihina Vithe Vithe Round those Vowels, pal. I have a I have a headache from this too, to be honest. <laughs> but it has to be done. All right. So then, let's continue. Oops, I need to schwaify some things. So it's this this rule. Non low vowels turn to schwa at the end of the word. Great. And then we need to do some secondary stress counting. So let's put this primary stress in first, actually. Teva fi vi vitha. So Vitha is going to be our primary stress, and this is all one word. I'm just keeping them apart for practical reasons. Teve fi vi Vitha. Teve fi hi na Vitha. Teve fi na Vitha. Okay. 
Now we remove all the mid vowels that are unstressed. And we also remove the final schwa. Um, now we do some voicing agreement in clusters. Which gives us <laughs> What is this language? And so there's the full paradigm. I hope you hate it. <laughs> no, I don't hope you hate it, but I, I anticipate that you will. Look at that. All right. This is evil. Like this is actually, we've brought evil into the world today. Why did we do this? This is, this is bad news. So it looks like there are, oops, I forgot one thing. This is going to dissimilate to gv. <sighs> okay. So what on earth is going on here? It looks like we have two allomorphs. Gv and tif. And the root is, the, the citation form is tov. But in the possessed paradigm, we have gv in the first person singular. Oh no, no, it's not actually that simple, is it? We have a third, a third allomorph here. And we don't really know what the segmentation will be until we see another noun and see what endings it gets. All right, so yeah, so the first person, and I'm going to just make these into different colors. Gv, this is very linothylophy. I'm getting flashbacks. The gv form is in the first person singular, the first person dual, and the second person plural. The tiff form is in the first person plural. No, nope, that's not the right kind of color. No, I don't like that either. Too bright. It's a bit eye bleedy. Apologies for the. There we go. This tiff allomorph is in the first person plural, the second person singular and dual and the third person plural. And I've, I see I've missed a, a gv, which is also in the third person dual. And then we, in the third person singular, we have this gv, which I don't even know. This is just bad news. This is very bad news. So there's our, our little paradigm. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna have time to do verbs today. I think what we should do is do one more noun that has a different, um, a different structure. Let's see if we can find it. Maybe we could do soeli, which turns into swell. Oh, sorry there yeah let's um let's take this and move this over here and then we can bring all of the sound changes on screen at once how about that okay so let's see what happens here and Yan Temili just pointed out and this is absolutely right 
this isn't even the full paradigm for house. This is just the full possession, the possessive paradigm for singular house. This language could get really, really, really complicated. But I'm curious as to what the actual, what the actual possessive suffixes are. And we don't know enough because we only have one example. Excuse me. So we need to do a little bit more. To find out. So if I'm doing something ungrammatical in Tokipono, please stop me. Um, but I think this is this is accurate. So soeli mi. So how are we going to do this? Let's go through our sound changes. We'll do our lenition first. So soeli vi, soeli hina, soeli ona. And then we do our um, umlaut. So I think the only thing that's going to happen is we're going to go seweli. That's the only effect. Then we do, 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 do. we turn this e into a glide seweliona. Then we turn the final vowels to schwa, seweliva. Then we delete the intertonic vowels in the word, and this does happen here. Seuli, seuliona. Although it doesn't happen here, does it? Because this has already lost a syllable. Seuli. Oh dear. Oh dear. Okay. So we continue. Um, this vowel initial suffix here is what's causing the, uh, the trouble. But it's not really trouble, is it? It's, it's just part of the fun. Let's get our stress shift prepared. So leva. So lihina, oops, no, that's secondary stress. What am I doing? Where is my primary stress marker? There we go. So liva, so lihina, so weliona. And we need to save some of these secondary stresses. So so lihina, so weliona. And then we need to jettison all of the unstressed mid vowels in the language as well as this final schwa sleeve sleeve so then we are left with this oops so lehina so leona Oops, we actually, sorry, there's one more thing I have to do. Swirlihina, swirlyona. Because we have this glide flipping rule, this metathesis rule here. So then, yeah, then we're left with swirlyona. And then we have something that's a bit odd. We have this hina or ihina or something. Etymologically, this should be the segmentation. This is tough. But then we get a completely different kind of suffix. We have ina here with a change in in the, the root final constant to F from V. Yeah, this is weird. This is very weird. Sli. How, how about sli to slui? This is reminding me of something we did in one of the Sakrat branches. Yeah, sliv. 
I think Sleeve is also possible though, because remember we had in the other in the Ruin Lex we had Swa. Okay, so I think what we need to do is say we just need to accept that there's going to be some analogy. We wanted a naturalistic language out of this. There, there is there are always forces of analogy acting to regularize paradigms. And there's just only so much a paradigm can take. So what I think we'll do. Hmm. I'm almost afraid to do <laughs> to do the next ones. Let's say that we have form the root form. So we, we need a principal part system. Here we have swill, swli, swilly, or swill. Maybe this uh, e versus y is is uh, synchronically. The e and y are in complementary distribution synchronically, so we don't have to posit a different representation for for these two. And maybe the same thing is here is true here, because vowels automatically because vowels always turn into glides before other vowels. Maybe we actually do not need a second form here. Gv is just an al allophone of gv before a vowel. I'm happy with that. So then all we need are our two. Oh, sorry. Yeah, our two allomorphs. Although that doesn't work here. So yeah, so maybe what we'll do is have this shape of a paradigm where we have form A and form B. So these are the principal parts. You need to know form A, form B, which is, so form A is orange and form B is green. And then the language has works using analogy to regularize things so that you only ever need two principal parts. And so for tov, it's tov gv. And for swil, it's So we'd write it probably like tov gv. House and swill. And then we have to figure out what to do with this sleeve. I think we should. I think we should restore. We should restore. Its former vowel here to make sure that this is not absolutely out of control. Hmm. Pondering, pondering, pondering. But I see we're out of time. Gah, come on. All right. So maybe this is what, you know, what writers do. Don't they leave people in suspense? Let's leave people in suspense. I'm going to say as a homework assignment, if you want to think about this cursed language, if you dream about it, if you have nightmares about it and you want to work on, uh, on this, uh, I give you my blessing. Come up with absolutely evil ideas. Um, but for now, we will say farewell to Tichfona, an evil language. And and farewell to you as well, YouTube. Thank you so much for joining us. Come back next time and we will work some more on this or something equally, uh, equally fun, equally strange, equally cursed. So until next time, I remain your, your servant in linguistics and uh, absolutely bizarre ideas, Colin. 
Okay. Okay, chat. That was a lot of fun. We only got to possessives. This is this language is, is absolutely evil, and I'm glad that it got so far away from us. That's exactly what we wanted. Um, so I'm going to head off now, but uh, thank you all so very much for joining us today. This has been a great deal of fun. And yeah, I think we'll do it again sometime. So watch this space. Um, we'll be back next week with another stream. And, uh, and then we will be taking a break for the um, second, or for the, the, the latter bit of September. It's a very, uh, it's an IRL very busy time um, in my world. So, so we will we'll take a few weeks off there and then we'll come back ready to go in October. But never fear, we will still have content for you. Things will be coming out on the channel. And um, yeah, that's, that's that. So I wish you all a very delightful rest of your week and we will see you back here on Tuesday.